there's a plaque right here, and it's so hard to see the details, but if you can make out this rectangular shaped map in the plaque, that's the first ever map drawn at Charles. And it was drawn in 1680 when they laid this place out. And the reason it's there in all places is Cumberland Street was the northern edge of that map. So as we take this left turn, we're entering what a lot of people call the old town or the old colony, which is where we're going to spend the majority of our evenings, right? And the buildings come and go, but their ages, some contemporary, some historic, but the ground we're traveling on is the oldest part of Charleston there ever was. And uh, this is another one of these old, old churches here. That's probably where you're going to go. Black belt move. If I can let them go fast and not stop them, everybody Oh, Love this little shot. Check this out right here. Yeah. Well, you got uh, the Church of England, St. Philip's, and then another really old church in St. Philip's. That graveyard, if y'all wanted to walk through an old one, is the oldest graveyard in the city that allows people in. So it's beautiful, beautiful, and can be creepy that night for sure. Do you have any idea of the difference between a graveyard and a cemetery? Cemetery is a standalone burial site. And uh, I should have warned you guys something big was coming down the way. But uh, yeah, life changing information. So the for sure. But where we're at right now, we're in the French Quarter. And the very literal reason it's called the French Quarter is because of the third ever church, the French Protestant Church. And it was just a big deal at that time. It was a major group. It's always been kind of why this neighborhood got to Basically, the French Protestants came to Charleston and the French Catholics went to New Orleans. So they both got French quarters. We've got the boring one, for sure. Uh, but many churches would come about. Uh, Hibernia Hall, St. Michael's, and just on and on and so forth. The Holy City. This is basically the oldest street in Charleston. You know, we're in the original eight streets, but that's the only one with its cobblestone still in place. So arguably that it is the oldest street in Charleston. We're not gonna go down it today though, it's pretty bumpy. If y'all do go down it in your car, the, the faster you go, the smoother the ride. How about when I'm going like this in the So we gotta hop in the left lane once the beamers pass us, right? Quick, quick, quick. Like, uh, you know, it's like putting on your turn signal. He knows what to do from here. He's done this a million times, you know. So now I've just got to tell him to not simply hop in the left lanes and bypass the track, which he would do. <laughs> so I'm going to pull back on both lanes and say, my love, as always, not a good idea. I'm like, he's like, what? I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> as years back, he's like, it's almost like him being like, Anytime you say, boss, you say the word, I'm gone. Now this intersection, if you can imagine, in that rectangular old town, this was the center. There's the dead square, geographically and, you know, figuratively. It's where everything kind of centered around. It's so famous, it's even got its own nickname, the Four Corners of Law. And it boils down to the fact that you've got City Hall, State Hall, Federal Courthouse, and then finally St. Michael's all in one place. You got city law, state law, federal law, and God law. All in one place. There's a dungeon in City Hall and a post office and a courthouse, so they say you can go to jail, pay your bail, send your mail, and say mail. major building built after the Civil War. It's gone through many manifestations, but in 1930, a hat store opened up here, and since then, their totally cute, not creepy at all, little advertising mascot has become big time part of Charleston lore. They call him the Hat Man, because every part of his body is a hat. You see that? Like his little feetsies are hats. Third row, you see any hats? Yeah, I do. Oh, yes or no question, where are they at? Shout him out if you see one. His eyes, his yeah. ears, his nose, his yeah. ears. 
basically made on the richest guy to cover come out of the chair. The, the landfill is about a half block into this area. This is not very historic, but it is an awesome place to hang out. It's called Waterfront Park. It's very cool. We got the Charleston Harbor. You can see Fort Sumter if you care to see. In what are you looking at? Look? They'd stop and look at something. Looking at for something too. It's like, oh, it's so interesting. But yeah, out there, you gotta kind of look through the trees. But there's like this little crane in the middle of the channel, and to the left of the crane, dead center, is where, of course, the very first battle of the Civil War began. But there was a very cavalier nature to that first battle. People weren't running in gun ho. And nobody even knew what was going on. A lot of people agree the first shots came from a third party, but without a doubt there was confusion to begin with. And the Confederate fortress to the right of the channel, which is way less visible, Fort Johnson, they'd shoot at each other back and forth for nearly 36 hours, and not a single person died. They were well within range of each other's artillery, but not a single person took a hit. If that leads you to infer that they weren't trying that hard, you weren't be, you wouldn't be the first person to think that. But people in the civilian community had been led to believe a lot of what uh, Brett Butler was being criticized for. They were like, this is such a joke, right? So basically when it happened, word got around, everybody came out of their homes and essentially watched it from the waterfront as if it were like a fireworks ceremony because they felt confidently out of range being three miles from the fort. So it goes to show that uh, people just had no idea how brutal it was about to get. And uh, <clears throat> the first casualty occurred at the Victory City. Think it's ready to go or what? First casualty was an accident, that's the point. It occurred at the Victory Ceremony. They had a party afterwards. In the middle of the night, cannabis fired and blew the first guy away. That's a fact. And historians will always debate if he said, hey man, hold my beer before that happened, but odds are it was uh, alcoholically induced. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a big pouty up there. He's stomping his feet, he's flicking his tail. You know, I did it. If I can make him park long enough, he'll give me these big pouty eyes. Uh, honey, should we spend $900 a square foot on our new condo? Oh, well, at least he's got waterfront property. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, but hate the game, right? Uh, because Charleston's favorite trick is to rob people of their waterfront view with landfill. They've done it since 1700 up until it literally happened right now. Eventually they're going to run out of river. <laughs> I don't know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Most of the waterfront in the historic district is um, residential, but there is one waterfront restaurant and it is right here, Fleet Landing. It's awesome, it's a great, great restaurant. You can see through this. It looks pretty darn close from this angle, but they got a little walkway rolling up here. Yeah. Now the market area is started as a small building and just grew into this gigantic huge complex. Prior to emancipation, it's where not slaves were traded necessarily, but regional plantations would send groups of slaves to trade mostly wholesale food items amongst one another, just for clarity's sake. And, uh, after the Civil War, it kind of just morphed into uh, it's hard to really put it into words, kind of like Times Square, Charleston. You know, it's really the hub of all the cities. And uh, the inside of the market. Anyway, gotta go. A lot of history, a lot of awesome vendors selling drugs and stuff. And the outside of the market has always kind of been the, you know, the fun, novel place. Even back in the day, you know, the city founded a church for the lost souls, the transient sailors that would be in that town.
walking through Battery Park in Charleston. That light is flickering. The light's flickering. It needs to be changed. This is so slippery. Having fun, Preston? Actually, a bunch of lights are flickering. You having fun, Michaela? Yeah. yeah. Michaela and Dad are going to go on a haunted house creepy ha ride. Haunted Ow. ghost tour here in a little bit. Yeah, 9:30. So that should be fun. 